of India Space Congress 2024. Well, I'm Dr. Azra Khan and I'm extremely delighted to be your host for this beautiful day ahead. And I hope everybody had their breakfast this morning because we need to be filled up on all the energy as we have a long day planned for you ahead. So with this, let's officially begin the proceedings for today. Today we have several sessions which will discuss about next generation engineering. Our first session will be discussion on leveraging industrial capabilities for India's next generation launch vehicles. Our panelists will discuss about India's accomplished space programs that have been supported by established industrial capabilities and help us to discover how these engineering capabilities can be leveraged for India's next generation launch vehicles. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me invite our chairperson, Dr. V. Narayan, Director, LPSC ISRO. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to invite our panelists, Mr. Ramesh Sankaran Nair, Godrej Aerospace, Mr. B.M. Raghavendra, Senior Deputy, GM Aerospace LNT, Mr. Sanjay Singh, Executive Director, Solar Industries India Limited. Now, I would like to invite, with a huge, huge round of applause, Mr. Prem Krishnan N, Scientist E Space Strategic Electronic Group of CDAC, Thiruvananthapuram. Can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. Prem Krishnan? So, very uh, good morning to all of you. Dr. V. Narayanan, uh, Director LPSC, and other dignitaries on the dais, and dear friends. Um, it's my. Um, it's, an, it's a great privilege for me to uh, present CDAC's pers perspective on uh, next, gen next generation engineering uh, leveraging capabilities uh, you know, for uh, the launch vehicles on this, uh, to this August gathering. So uh, let me just briefly give a uh, brief introduction to my organization uh, before I start. Next slide, please. Next one. So I'll, I'll keep it short. Uh, we uh, we are a scientific society under the Ministry of Electronics and IT, Government of India. We are located, um, uh, you know, we have around 12 centers across India with a strong uh, professional workforce of around uh, 3,800. Uh, there are multiple verticals that we work on and some of them are mission programs of the Government of India which include the National Supercomputing Mission, the National uh, uh, the, the Digital India RISC-V pro program wherein we have brought in a series of microprocessors uh, recently. Next. So in Trivandrum, uh, you know, there are multiple verticals that we uh, work on. Uh, the I belong to the strategic electronics group, which, uh, which, which uh, works on uh, space and defense. And apart from that, we have other verticals which work on ASIC design. And then we also have a uh, communications group that has brought out software defined radios and cognitive radios. And there are a host of other groups like power electronics, control instrumentation, and many others. Next. Yeah. So uh, our legacy has uh, been in underwater electronics we, wherein we have over th three decades of experience there. And then subsequently we ventured into uh, um, uh, land and security technology. So it is in fact a classic, it's a, an example of serendipity that we uh, got an entry into space. Based on our uh, uh, experience in um, uh, underwater, you know, especially sonic and ultrasonic systems, so uh, it's an interesting coincidence that uh, with a legacy in underwater, we got into space, and at the same time, ISRO is trying to get underwater through the Samudrayaan mission, wherein they are developing the immersible uh, module for uh, deep ocean deep ocean missions, which which can go up to six kilometers. And then off late, we have also uh, starting, uh, beginning our work on semiconductor technologies and also strategic storage technologies. Next. Yeah. So just to set the tone for this um, uh, s session, you know, I, I, I've just uh, listed out some of the key, up, key uh, you know, uh, events in the past uh, four, four years or so. We had the state-led uh, reforms uh, do, during the COVID period, which you know, wherein there was much emphasis put on the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. 
which was followed by the geospatial guidelines which came out in 2021, followed by the revealing of the Indian space policy in uh, 2023. And earlier this year, we had uh, the, relax uh, the uh, FDI, in the announcement on the FDI in space, uh, particularly up to 49% in launch vehicles and up to 100% in other segments. And then um, the decadal vision and strategy, which has been un uh, unveiled by the uh, in by in space, so talks of the design and development of heavy and reusable launch vehicles by ISRO. Next one. So I think when you talk of leveraging the capabilities of the industry, you know, what you know what needs to be stressed upon is the ecosystem. You now let me just quote an example of an ecosystem that is not very well known. Now Kerala you know, is known for other things other than manufacturing. You know, because you, the moment you hear Kerala, probably you think of tourism and stuff like that. But then, you know, the, there is a manufacturing industry that grew by stealth in Kerala. You know, this is a book that uh, was published two years before, uh, it's, it, which, which is titled Below the Radar. How the manufacturing industry grew by stealth in Kerala. So, you know, VSSC was established there and, you know, in fact, the Indian space program itself uh, began in, uh, in the outskirts of Trivandrum. So we have had, there are, there are hundreds of M M MSMEs, uh, you know, who are probably, they don't, come, maybe they don't come into the limelight, but there are hundreds of MESEs which support the uh, uh, launch vehicle development programs of both you know, happening uh, for, for ISR, I just... Uh, and uh, the author, C. Balagopal, is, uh, is a retired IAS officer. He did the unthinkable in the 1980s. He resigned from the IAS and set up a manufacturing facility for blood bags, uh, you know, through TOT there. And it's another uh, story that is not well known is that one of the world's largest manufacturing plants for blood bags is actually located in Trivandrum, in the outskirts. The company's name is Terramo Penpal. That was about C. Balagopal. I will move on. Next. Yeah. So as I told you, the development of an, so our, our view is that uh, the development of ecosystem, particularly for customized electronic solutions is imperative for next generation you know, uh, to, uh, launch vehicles, particularly in the context of uh, supply chain delays, obsolescence, and long-term technical and service support. Now our forte, especially in the space sector, has been on providing customized electronic solutions. No, um, I'll tell you how some of these, you know, for example, the, you know, we have at least four uh, solutions that we have developed for the space, uh, for ISRO, which have, uh, which have been working well for more, close to two decades. For instance, the Sonic, uh, ultrasonic non-destructive test testing system, which has been deployed at various centers across ISRO, it has been running well for more than, uh, we have brought multiple revisions and it has been, it is almost 18th year, it has uh, started in 2006, well into its 18th year. And then uh, the ultrasonic solid propellant burn rate measurement system, uh, you know, it has also been successfully running for uh, many years now. And then uh, another point that I would highlight, highlight especially, it's a classic example of Admadurmar uh, Bharat, wherein precision instrumentation amplifier, which was used in SRI, uh, SDSE, uh, the the the, compo uh, the component got obsolete, and uh, they and the, an, alter and the alternate component couldn't be identified. So you know, thanks to the track record we had, uh, we were we were approached by ISRO, you know, with the specifications, and subsequently we we could successfully develop a prototype, which uh, which was um, you know, whose launch which was launched, uh, which who, that product was launched by the um, ISRO chairman himself last year, and then. Uh, now based on the requirement, you know, we have been, um, we have also uh, developed the thermal conductivity measurement system. So let me just give you a brief in, uh, overview of these products. Next, one. next slide, please. So one is the sounds, or uh, we call it sounds. It is the non-destructive test and evaluation system, which is uh, used for inspection of porous and composite materials used in uh, various uh, launch vehicles, and it has been certified for use in both uh, PSLV and GSLV. Uh, uh, we have, uh, and another spin-off is that, you know, we, even though the technology development was undertaken for ISRO, we have also got, uh, we are also addressing similar requirements for defense. And this has already been installed in various uh, DRDO labs as well. Next. Yeah. So the ultrasonic solid uh, propellant burn rate measurement system, so this is a critical parameter for, uh, uh, you know, for predicting the trajectory of uh, uh, launch vehicle. So 
This offers significant advantages over the conventional ballistic evaluation motor method. Now, the advantage is that previously you could, you could get only one reading with uh, maybe f uh, 50 kg of um, solid propellant and we could and now you, you get uh, you know, multiple readings for using just maybe 100 grams of fuel. So that is a kind of uh, efficiency that we could bring in. Uh, and then we hold a, uh, you know, we, we were responsible developing the electronic solution for this, uh, for data, data acquisition and amplification, etc. So uh, we hold a joint patent with uh, ISRO, uh, you know, for the system. It was, the, it was awarded earlier this year. And it has already been deployed in various ISRO centers and uh, DRDO labs. Yeah. And uh, this is a uh, this is one great moment for us when our honorable uh, former Minister of State, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, acknowledged uh, our contributions for both uh, USB, RMS, and sounds, which were part of the qualification test for both the, uh, for the Chandrayaan mission. Next. And uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, the, the this is the um, adoption, uh, uh, installation of the inauguration of the test facility at a DRDO lab. Thank you. Next, um, and uh, yeah, this is this is something I already mentioned: the precision instrumentation amplifier, which you know, it was one uh, case where you know we developed an, we 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 developed an indigenous solution where none weren't available. So you know the, the, the classic case because we could we could find an answer to the uh, you know the, the obsolescence issue in a, in a so we, uh, for a, again a customized electronic solution. It's a mission critical equipment in static firing and uh, you know we have already uh, the product was already launched by uh, Chairman of ISRO. Next one please. So this happened in the backdrop of the Aditya mission uh, last year. Next. And we have also ventured into based on requirement from, from ISRO, we have also uh, developed a thermal conductivity measurement system uh, for quality evaluation of uh, various types of propellants, which is currently used by VSSC. Next. So, you know, the way ahead, you know, we, we uh, hope, we would like, you know, we, we will be very much, we be part of the ecosystem that supports uh, ISRO in addressing many of its uh, customized uh, electronic solutions. And we also w would like to take up collaborative R&D and then expand into more areas where, wherein we have a lot of strength. For instance, uh, you know, we are the nodal agency of the government of India for the microprocessor development program wherein we have s uh, developed a series of microprocessors. We would, uh, you know, explore, uh, we would like to explore uh, areas of collaboration there in ASIC design. And then we are also into uh, software defined radio and uh, radio frequency integrated circuit design. So we would like to explore pot the potential collaboration in those areas. And then um, um, also Iraq is also the nodal agency for the national supercomputing mission. So we would also be, you know, uh, looking to collaborate in uh, high performance computing as well. So that's it from my end. Uh, thank you all for giving us this opportunity. You can join here. Come. No, I, I don't intend to be part of the panel discussion, sir. That's okay. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I, I would request Dr. V. Narayanan to please lead the discussion for the today. Okay. Uh, very, very good morning to all of you. I think Mr. Prem Krishnan from CDAC has given a very nice summary of their role and contribution for various uh, space programs. Uh, I am fully aware of their contribution and uh, I think I am not going to dwell on what he has contributed. Now, this panel is supposed to discuss on leveraging industrial cooperation for India's next generation launch vehicle. Uh, that is what is the topic given to us. Uh, along with me, we are having three eminent personalities with us. We are having uh, Mr. Raghavendra, Senior Deputy General Manager, uh, BDN Marketing Aerospace uh, from LNT. I think LND contribution to uh, the space and defense activities are well known. Uh, I think I will not dwell on that. And uh, we are very much benefited out of them. Then my uh, very, very, very close friend on the right side, Ramesh Kumar Sang Sangaran, Deputy General Manager Ma Marketing from Kodraj Aerospace is there. Then we are having our friend, Mr. Sanchai Singh from uh, Solar, uh, Solar Systems, Explosives 
and uh, ammunition area and that is another key contributor for uh, the space related as well as defense related activities so what i propose is you know, this session is supposed to start 10:30 and supposed to be over 11:30 that means uh, legally speaking we have 15 minutes more time but then because it started only 11:15 Yeah, we have to also gain the organizers. They have requested to gain some time. So what we'll do is we'll plan to have a session of totally 45 minutes. Uh, out of that, our friend has already taken uh, 15 minutes. Doesn't matter. Now we are having 30 minutes. I propose like this. Uh, first, I will give you a brief introductory remarks, maybe uh, five minutes. Then I will uh, give each panelist, three of the panelists, each probably you can take uh, three to four minutes. Uh, in first explaining little your uh, because all the new audience are there your major contribution uh, to the space sector and the aerospace sector in uh, in particular aerospace sector and uh, you can uh, little bit touch on that then your perspective of the leveraging industrial capability for the next generation vehicles your perspective also please address so 3 to 4 minutes then we will come back to the second round uh, maybe each person can can take one or two minutes then probably we will summarize before that we will also hear if any specific queries are there so with that our target should be to complete by 12 o'clock so maybe another half an hour so with that i think i have prepared three four slides probably that slides can run in the background can can you put the first slide okay the okay the topic is well known uh, go go to the next slide yeah uh, dear friends as all of you are aware uh, indian space program is uh, almost 61 years old the entire space activities in the country was started in the year 1962 uh, by the visionary leader uh, dr vikram sarabhai who is the uh, father of indian space program and then we had major milestones uh, 1963 november 21st we had a small tiny rocket taking off from uh, tumba that was not our uh, rocket it was a imported rocket from other country then 1967 november 20th we had the first indigenous rocket uh, taking off from uh, tumba soil from that uh, humble beginning we have come a long way uh, and to our credit till today something around uh, Uh, close to 4000 sounding rockets are lifted up from indian soil and uh, six generations of launch vehicles are developed and the first vehicle you all know slv3 and the project director is none other than the people's president apj abdul kalam uh, which placed a 40 kg satellite that satellite launch vehicle was 17 ton lift off mass and uh, placed 40 kg satellite in the low earth orbit in 1980 and india joined the elite group of the space faring nations having that capability and then we have subsequently built the aslv pslv gslv lvm3 and sslv these are all the vehicles we have built currently we are having four operational vehicles the pslv uh, mar2 mar3 and the sslv now if you take uh, the capability i think all the numbers are written there probably you can read and uh, slv3 lift off mass was 17 ton in 1980 after 37 years uh, 2017 Uh, we had the lift off of the lvm3 vehicle that uh, heavy lift vehicle what we are having and that vehicle is in 37 years that lift off mass has gone up to 37.4 times very easy to remember <laughs> uh, from 17 tons and around 642 to 642 ton is the lift off mass and the capability of vehicle is to play some around 8000 to 8500 kg in the leo orbit that is the capability from 40 kg you have grown to that level and then of course we are having the sslv uh, also uh, currently developed uh, now uh, if you see the indian space program that is one is the launch vehicles another one is the satellites satellites 1975 we had the first launch of aryapata probably you can show the next slide uh, first uh, aryapata uh, that satellite was launched that was uh, purely with the support and help of other country we built and from that today if you see Uh, we have built something around uh, close to 130 satellites and 124 satellites are launched and uh, something around 94 launch vehicle missions close to 4000 sounding rockets are placed in orbit 
and you all know uh, today uh, india is not one among the space faring nation one of the really uh, one of the very excellent space faring nation which has really done lot of accomplishment and made all indians proud and last year uh, november i mean uh, august 23rd you all know india made good history by the soft landing of the uh, chandrayaan 3 Uh, the first country which is soft landed near to south pole and made all indians uh, proud last year <coughs> and then this year uh, january 6 we also commissioned the aditya l1 satellite and thereby india become one among the four uh, countries having the capability of uh, having a satellite to study the sun then of course our lvm3 vehicle has uh, done lot of wonders all the vehicles uh, this one is uh, successful and the take pslv our work has almost uh, 60 vehicles we have launched and 58 vehicles are successful uh, and uh, now this mark 3 vehicle is the one which is also year marked for the uh, human uh, space uh, program all the activities are going on now coming to go, go to the next slide coming to the future programs before we talk about the current thing and uh, you know the our honorable prime minister has already announced the future program what we are to do and uh, number one we have to do the gaganyaan which is a approved program thereby we are planning to take our own brothers to space and bring them back safely by next year and this is what is the target and of course a lot of experiment has to be done then by 2025 uh, end uh, we are going to have that first uh, that's what i told first uh, manned mission and this year we are planning the first unmanned mission then 2026 chandrayaan 4 we are going to uh, have a soft landing and we are going to bring back sample um, for further studies this is the target and 2035 we will be having our own space station and towards that 2028 we are going to uh, place the first module it is a five module configuration which is currently under study the first module will be placed in 2028 and 2040 uh, india uh, india will take indians to moon and bring them back safely uh, these are all the targets now go to the next slide now towards this to achieving this lot of capabilities has to be built now i want to tell uh, one thing uh, when 1967 we lifted off the first uh, tiny rocket some around 7 kg mass from indian soil other countries already russia has uh, taken a human to space 1961 yuri gagarin has uh, taken and brought them back uh, brought him back safely and 1969 i was in the first standard and neil armstrong landed on moon Uh, yeah, with a massive rocket, a 3,400 ton was the lift off mass that massive rocket lifted off and uh, brought them back. But that is the time, of course, we started the space program. From that humble beginning, we have come to greater heights. Couple of places we have become number one. For example, in the moon orbit, we are having the Chandrayaan-2 has placed a um, orbiter which is having a camera uh, on orbit, uh, high resolution camera, which is the best in the moon orbit what we are having in the world. and then of course we had uh, accomplished 104 satellite in, in a single mission and uh, and the mars orbiter mission uh, first time india is the first country we achieved that fleet in the first attempt itself and thereby and chandrayaan 2 you all know and chandrayaan 1 found water molecules and there are lot of accomplishments and achievements now coming to when we are talking about the future program we have to build the new launch vehicle capabilities uh, number 1 Uh, we are going to build a new right, right now a vehicle is under configuration study and uh, in the process of design is going on which is called the new generation launch vehicle surya and the capabilities uh, the present mark 3 vehicle is uh, having capability of lifting 8.5 ton to 9 ton to leo orbit and 40 kg was the thing which was accomplished by slv3 in 1980 from that we are having the target of 23 ton to leo orbit that is the capability of this vehicle and uh, with two strap ons it is a core vehicle is 23 ton to leo and with two solid strap ons this capability will go to 32 tons to leo orbit and uh, there is a propulsive module and uh, solid motors uh, you all know we are having the full technology and the vehicle is a 93 meter height vehicle with close to something around 680 to 690 ton lift off mass and uh, it is a three stage vehicle and first stage is powered by a uh, liquid oxygen liquid methane clustered engine nine engines are going to power that stage we call it as a 450 ton um, uh, lox methane stage 
second stage is a 120 ton propellant loaded uh, stage powered by two uh, lox methane engines and upper stage is a cryogenic stage and now uh, i am very happy to the share the stage with my colleagues uh, from lnt and the solar uh, system solar uh, industries and godrej you know in fact when you look at the indian space program the growth is not only by isro scientist it is a national program and all the of course from cdac and uh, all the people you know, have contributed and the contribution by the indian industry is phenomenal uh, one one or two couple of examples i have to tell one is for example you take our pslv vehicle out of our budget almost 75 to 80% budget is spent with i mean given to industries for manufacturing of the hardware and then you can understand what is the type of contribution coming from uh, the various indian industries and uh, who is here with me my colleagues are only the representatives otherwise so many indian industries are uh, contributing now our target is like this uh, whatever uh, produce uh, rather developed and we are rolling out to the indian uh, industries for example you all may be knowing the pslv five vehicles a consortium with hcl and uh, um, um, lnt consortium they are going to manufacture once they complete that and they are entire pslv work will be uh, of course uh, you may go to them or go to appropriate industries now lvm3 vehicle already seven vehicles we have accomplished and this also now we are in the process of um, handing over to the industry we are in the process of selecting the industry and sslv also we are uh, thinking of handing over to the indian industry now uh, there without indian industry surely the indian space program would not have come to this level not only in the launch vehicle even in the satellite area also which we are not going to address and their contribution and uh, is very significant uh, on this occasion let us give a very big hand to all our industrial partners in water way they have contributed uh, for the indian industry now coming to our uh, this one uh, coming to the new generation launch vehicle uh, the we are going to have a different model right now for example whatever hardware you are realized couple of places we have the isro uh, through the government system we have invested on the equipments and in fact in the cartridge or lnd a couple of equipments we have invested and the uh, machineries are built there and then of course we have placed order and we are getting the output and hcl uh, for example bangalore we are producing 4 meter diameter tank tankages are getting produced a huge investment is made by hcl uh, sorry isro and then we are producing through uh, the hcl system but now for this the guideline from the government and as per the new space sector reform the indian industries are going to invest on it will be a, uh, the partnership development they are going to invest on the machineries equipments and uh, we are going to really uh, join together we are going to develop the engine and uh, the entire vehicle system now in this vehicle we have to uh, bring four point something around 5.7 meter uh, aluminum alloy rings are required then it is a 5 meter diameter class vehicle and the engines Uh, for example currently we are launching hardly 10 vehicles per year so number of engine requirements are less but here even one vehicle you know, we are having 11 uh, um, uh, lox methane engines and a cryogenic engine and if you are uh, having three vehicles then you know the numbers has to roll out and of course the first stage we are planning to uh, recover also uh, then this is one of the vehicle and there we are expecting huge contribution you know, from industries second thing is Uh, when we are talking about taking man to moon and bring them back safely surely the capability is not this vehicle is not adequate huge capability has to be built so different studies are going on and for that also the industries are uh, required to support so uh, with this uh, introduction uh, for india to become a developed country surely so surely every sector has to grow and i am sure the space sector Uh, is uh, going to go in a big way and uh, with uh, 2040 when we accomplish that mission uh, india indian space will be program will be in par with any other countries uh, in all the areas in terms of launch vehicle capability in terms of satellites and in terms of payloads everywhere and that is where and we are together along with indian industry we are going to contribute for making this country as a developed country so with this uh, brief introduction now let me hand over to the honorable panelists so let us start with mr raghavendra yes mr raghav thank you very much sir uh, very good morning to all of you and it's uh, it's really a pleasure to see the entire audience and it's always a good time to have uh, 
uh, chair with uh, Narayanan sir. He has always been a support for almost all our endeavors in, in the past and also in the future, I'm sure. So having said that, I'll quickly touch upon, uh, uh, very quickly, on what is Larson and Tubro and what we have done in the space sector uh, going further. Uh, so Larson and Tubro is a $27 billion uh, multinational Indian conglomerate, uh, which works in various sectors of defense and aerospace, hydrocarbon, infotech, uh, financial services, construction, uh, building uh, large projects for thermonuclear reactors, and so on and so forth. And we have been doing this not just in India, uh, but also globally. So uh, as a company, we always uh, stepped up to the required national re need, which was there, and uh, ensured we have been a partner to the government for all the strategic growth sectors of this country. Uh, now, I'm a part of uh, that business, which is called as uh, LNT Precision Engineering Systems, which focuses on defense and aerospace. And uh, as far as uh, this strategic sector of defense and aerospace is concerned, we operate uh, in various domains of uh, missiles and missile launchers, guns, radars, uh, space especially. Uh, we are into multiple domains of space. I'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, we also uh, are in the aero aerospace sector uh, where we are making the aerostructure and wings for our fighter aircraft stages. Um, we are also a complete solution provider for multiple solutions that we have given to the armed forces, the Na Indian Navy, Indian Air Force and the uh, Indian Army. So uh, having said that, uh, just stepping up quickly to what we have been doing in the space sector. So uh, Narayan sir showed the history of uh, ISRO, how it developed from, 19, from the earliest SLV-3, then ASLV, PSLV, GSLV, GSLV Mark III, and the latest SSLV. Uh, I'm happy to share that every of these launch vehicle which has been uh, flown by ISRO, there is a contribution from LND right from the first SLV-3. So we have been manufacturing rocket motor casings, uh, we have been manufacturing light alloy structures, heat shields uh, for the launch vehicles. Apart from the launch vehicle segment, we are also a uh, partner to the satellite segment by making bus structures, uh, solar array deployment mechanisms, uh, reflector deployment mechanisms. And uh, in the growth journey for ISRO, a lot of testing facilities have been created, like the hypersonic wind tunnel in VSSC Trivandrum. Uh, and the uh, high altitude engine test facility at Mahindragiri also has been set up, put up by Larson and Tubro. Uh, going further from what we have been doing in these segments, we also set up uh, even whatever uh, uh, CNS band radar which is set up at Shar mm -hmm. or uh, the 32 meter antenna which is set up uh, for deep space networking uh, that has also been made by Larson and Tubro. Uh, moving further, like what he said, that uh, right from moving ahead from manufacturing to being a system integrator, uh, once the space sector opened up, uh, we got a got an opportunity to build five uh, PSLVs, and uh, I, we were very happy to share that. Uh, mostly by end of this year, the first industry-made launch vehicle will be flown. That's the target given to us. And uh, this is only the beginning of how a collaboration can happen between ISRO uh, and uh, the industry. Where here, of course, we have tied up as a consortium with HL, uh, and we have been HL is supplying all the liquid stages, and we have been supplying the solid stages. So this is in a nutshell of uh, what we are doing uh, in the space sector. Um, probably when we talk about uh, NGLV which is uh, a different class of launch vehicle, which needs a different class of propulsion systems and much larger uh, systems that are required. Of course, there is a basic capability developed by ISRO. ISRO has developed the entire ecosystem. And uh, the entire ecosystem needs to scale up in terms of uh, getting larger, getting bigger. Uh, almost everything that you see, it's a, uh, from a four, uh, I think 40 kgs to 400 kg itself was a 100x growth. And now from 400 kg, we are talking about 22 tons. So that's, that's a different level of technology. And one very important thing that uh, we see as an industry, what we can play a role is uh, not just in the manufacturing, but getting involved 
right at the design phase. So th there are capabilities in the industry, right from concept design to prototyping and uh, to the complete serial production model. So th this is something which exists. So as, as Larson and Tobro, we have uh, our uh, the design uh, is CMMI level five, and uh, we also have got Semilac certification for UAV uh, design. And we have been uh, partnering some of the DRDO programs where they have stepped up and given the complete aerostructure design to a private company, which was never the case earlier. So times are changing where there are capabilities available within the country. And uh, one of the very important strengths that a uh, private industry can bring in is that they can uh, get technologies, they can leapfrog the technology by bringing in something which is not there within the country instead of Abinitio developing in. For example, one of the classic examples where guns were required uh, by the armed forces very quickly uh, for, our, uh, for our northern borders. And uh, we were given a target to develop a new gun, which can meet both uh, desert condition as well as uh, in a cl cold climate condition. Uh, nowhere across the world such a geography exists where you need the guns for all the conditions. So we could partner with, Nix, uh, with the Hanwa uh, and bring in a gun and completely redesign it to meet the Indian conditions. And uh, I am happy to share that we supplied 100 guns within a period of just three years, which was a record by itself. So this is a capability what industry can bring in, in actually scaling up, not only scaling up, bringing in new technology. So we also have a strength of uh, bringing in virtual validation tools, virtual simulation tools, which can enhance or shorten the time uh, in rapid prototyping and bringing up uh, uh, newer solutions faster to the market. So uh, this is very quickly I wanted to share as a first uh, cut. So I'll hand over the thing to. Yeah, um, good morning everybody. And uh, uh, I thank uh, the organizers for giving us an opportunity to be pre present in this panel and give our thoughts. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Narin sir for uh, having given us a perspective of the Indian space journey and also the future projects that are there. And uh, for Godridge, uh, I should really thank uh, ISRO and uh, LPSC and Dr. Narayanan's team for the opportunity to be here right now as a panelist because we got into aerospace because of ISRO. So in fact, uh, 1985 when we started, uh, it was based on uh, you know, an interaction between our then chairman, uh, um, uh, Mr. Naval Godridge and, uh, and uh, the, the chairman of ISRO at that time, Professor Yuar Rao. And uh, that's how we got into aerospace in 1985. Started making all precision machine components, moved to making liquid propulsion engines for ISRO. And from 1989, uh, we've been manufacturing the liquid propulsion engines with our consortium partner, uh, MTR in Hyderabad, uh, the Vikas engine. We started delivering those engines in 1993. And since then, uh, you know, together we have delivered more than 175 of such engines of varied uh, you know, uh, with the variety of such engines that we have delivered. We got into the, you know, uh, the cryogenic engine manufacturing in 1990. Uh, you know, we were part of the original team along with Isro, uh, you know, when they went to Russia. And 96, we started working on that. And subsequently, all the liquid propulsion engines, except for, uh, you know, uh, probably the, you know, PS4 stage, every other liquid propulsion engine, we have played a part. Even the, you know, development of the semi-cryogenic engine, and the varied, varied variety of uh, the cryogenic engine, uh, we've been part of it. We also make the satellite thrusters. Uh, you know, thanks to ISRO, they have mentored us all throughout these years, and then which actually gave us a capability to participate in many other programs across defense as well as aircraft-related work. Um, just just to give you a brief idea about what we have contributed, thanks to ISRO, we have made parts for the Chandrayaan-3 program which was working after 100 seconds of launch till the time the lander landed on moon. So be the launch vehicle, be the propulsion module, and the lander, the braking system, the thrusters for that, the parts were manufactured at Godridge. So this has been the opportunity that was given by ISRO duty mentoring. We, have also, we are also working in the defense space. We also make the you know, flight control actuators for uh, the LC Tejas. We actually um, you know, uh, work on um, many other programs for defense. And uh, we have also started working on, uh, you know, uh, recently we also got an order for uh, making the all the engine modules for the Kaviri derivative engine. 
based on which we got an AFQMS uh, certification also, so we have self, uh, sort of self-certified uh, uh, inspection agency for that particular program. We also, this enabled us to, you know, start working in the global level also. So we work with, uh, you know, the Boeings and the Rolls-Royce and the Safran aircraft engines, uh, the G Aerospace, we supply parts to the engines, uh, you know, uh, um, and also many other foreign global players. So this has been the journey of uh, Godrej in aerospace. Um, and um, uh, with respect to what we are looking at in this particular, you know, the, the panel discussion point over here. So as I mentioned, the requirements of the engine manufacturing was taught to us right from 1989. And that has established a lot of facilities and capabilities in Godrej. So right from, you know, the, form, the, the fabrication, machining, understanding the requirements in manufacturing, investing in new technologies. In fact, some of the facilities that came up, which ISRO has uh, set up in Godrej, actually needed a lot of understanding and development because that was indigenized for that particular requirement. So that, everything, understanding that. So we have a specialized uh, manpower and facilities and capabilities, you know, required for manufacturing the liquid propulsion engines for ISRO. We actually also have the, you know, uh, uh, the strategy to actually support all these programs. So we keep investing in these kind of programs and all that. This has brought us to a certain level, which will actually, you know, enable us to participate in a very, you know, uh, you know, value at, uh, in, give, or rather, I'll, I'll put it this way, that we'll be able to do more value addition to ISRO programs right from the development stages. As he had mentioned, uh, you know, that uh, we could, participate right from development stages. So the new gen, the new engine programs or phase row, we could participate right from the beginning. We could give our feedback on the manufacturability of these engines and those kind of, you know, we can participate in that kind of level also. You also know that, uh, you know, the Indian industry is gearing up in a very big way. The opening up of the uh, Indian space sector has brought in a lot of new players coming with new ideas and, you know, uh, it's, it's a, I would say it's like a, you know, a, a big moment for everybody in terms of opportunities that they can actually bring to the table. If that can be leveraged by the proper guidance, uh, especially uh, with ISRO guiding them, I think that will be a very, very big moment for uh, contributing to the new developmental programs where big companies with a lot of experience and having specialized capabilities will be able to take up the complete manufacturing and development and through their capability to sub manage a sub total supply chain in a terrorized manner, be it the, you know, we can bring up to the level of the MSMEs, all of them participating in this. I think we can take up the complete uh, ecosystem along for manufacturing and developing these new programs. Uh, that's all I have to say in my opening comments. I give it to you, sir. Okay, okay, thank you, Mr. Ramesh. So now we'll go to Mr. Sanjay Singh for you. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, Dr. Narayanan, my eminent uh, panelist here, and the dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, by the name, the solar industry is the first thing which comes to mind of the people is that we are in the solar energy. But to let me just clarify that we are not in the solar energy. We are completely in and out ammunition and explosives people. So uh, it's my pri proud privilege to be sitting along with the uh, ISRO scientists as well as the industry from the Godrej and uh, LNT who have been proudly associated for many decades. But we are much younger company. We are around 28 years old company. And we are, our bread and butter is explosives. So we are the largest manufacturer of explosives in India. And we are also the largest exporter of explosives. So we make end-to-end -end explosives for the mining and infrastructure sector. And we also are now associated since last a decade, I would say, in the defense and aerospace side. So in terms of uh, my, uh, our reach, we, uh, as we, India demanded a lot of explosives and ammunition, Many people may not know that we were not able to make much of the HMX or RDX capacity was not lacking in the country. We were the one which started off a decade ago, our vision and the requirement of molecular explosives. And we are proud to say that today we are the largest ex manufacturer of RDX, HMX, TNT in the private sector in the world. So uh, our scale is that we are manufacturing 800 tons of explosives per day. We manufacture 1 million detonators per day and we make around 30,000 tons of cast boosters which are required for boosting for all around the world per annum. So uh, we are that and now with respect to our foray into defense and aerospace, we, when we started with HMX and uh, RDX, 
the country was lacking the capacity to make HMX and we started with the first one to replace the Russian uh, formulations of HMX and RDX which were coming into the country. And that we uh, indigenized and now we are giving for the warheads of our missiles to the BDL. We make uh, OMA and Okfall based uh, uh, formulations of uh, HMX and RDX. Then we make large quantities of TNTs which go into also into the ordnance factories as well as to the other uh, industry around the world. We are proud to say that HMX and RDS, which was typically imported into the country, we are now exporting to Europe and USA. And uh, when the opportunity came to us to, to get into the propulsion side, we established the full-fledged solid rocket propulsion plant in the country. And we uh, were supposed to start as a Pinaka rocket motors. But uh, as the things move, you guys know how the things move in India in the defense sector. In the last one decade, we have not yet got the supply of the Pinaka rockets into the armed forces, but we have got the order for exporting Pinaka rockets to Armenia. Now, very soon, probably, we'll also start supplying Pinaka rockets to the Indian armed forces. But in the meantime, as you say, you start off with something, but you end up doing and learning a lot of things. We are the supplier of uh, Brahmo's booster motor. So we are supplying uh, Brahmo's booster, which you now fly in India, uh, are coming with the Indian booster motors. We are also supplying Akash booster motors. We are also supplying uh, warheads for various uh, uh, anti-tank missiles, as well as for the Pinaka rockets. We are making full-fledged. Now we are able to make all the three versions of Pinaka rocket, guided, enhanced, as well as the regular Pinaka rocket. So this is what it is there. And then when we got an opportunity for the larger motors, we uh, uh, learned a lot from ISRO for the, making the PSLV XL motors in our own facilities. We set up the whole facility for manufacturing this PSLV XL motors. And uh, we are very proud to say that when the first uh, uh, private in, uh, startup for the launch vehicle, Skyroot Aerospace, uh, came into picture, they approached us for making their solid rocket motors. And uh, we were the one who made their stage three and stage two motors. And as the things moved, they were the pioneering into the field. So naturally, there were a lot of hurdles to get, use the ISRO or the DRDO facilities. We were always there to support them, modifying our facilities, developing the new facilities in our field uh, to, to test the motor. So we not only manufactured the motor for them, but we also modified our facility to test the full-scale stage three motors of, of uh, uh, Skyroot Aerospace and tested in our facility. We also made their first suborbital rocket, which flew uh, off Skyroot. The motor was made by us. So that's how we went into, and then we are also we also supplied four rocket motor, uh, Excel motors for ISRO. So we are learning into this area. We are get, trying to put put the new things into this and getting about this. Other than this, we also into the space ordnance, either the uh, conventional rocket launch vehicles or the new launch vehicle. They also require a lot of space ordnance. We are the end-to-end -end manufacturer of all the pyrotechnic devices, micro detonators, and also the uh, uh, MPBX, which is required for command district system. So we have supplied the command district system for ISRO, plus we are making the full scale of uh, command district system for Skyroot aerospace uh, rocket vehicles. So we are there into the energetics. We call ourselves the energetic companies. And uh, not only the, with the solid, but we also supported uh, Skyroot for testing their cryogenic engines and the liquid engine in our facility, modifying our facility for, for that. So we are there with us. We are taking some baby steps into the whole areas, into the propulsion, as well as in the space ordnance area. So any new opportunities, I would like to say that any new opportunities coming up, we are the quick learner. We will adapt our systems. We are also, like, before we get onto the new generation launch vehicle, there are a lot of intermediate steps in between. Uh, the, the LVM3 is coming up. PSLV is already there in the private industry. SSLV is going to be the private industry. But where is the facility, where is the capacity to make the rocket motors? Okay. So uh, we will be in the forefront. We, we, our, we have a... Uh, full fledged, full commitment to set up the new facilities required and get, get on to work with any of the other colleagues like LNT or Godrej or any other consortium coming into the picture to help them out in supplying the rocket motors if required. Even the Skyroot has got a big plans for making much larger vessels, rocket launch vehicles. So we are there to with them to to support them fully with the investing into the solid rocket motors for their launch vehicles. As the technology evolves, we all know that we have to be agile, keep learning to the new things. Today we are making certain things, but we are ready to work with in terms of energetics for any new requirement, any new development which are going to come up in future. 
So we look forward to working with all of our industry partners as well as mentor and guru, ISROs and CDAC people for various things. We are using your uh, ultrasonic burn rate uh, in our factory for measuring the solid rocket. Uh, so I'm very happy to share you with that information. So we are there with uh, all the industry partners and it's a collaborative effort. And uh, we are going to be step in step with the ISRO, other industries, as well as the industry partners. So with that, our uh, Dr. Naran has set a very clock count down with the time, so I would not take too much of time for that. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much for the opportunity given by SIA to be in the panel here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanjay Singh. Actually, this panel discussion is supposed to be one hour and uh, stopping in half an hour really, uh, sorry, uh, we could not succeed, but then we'll take another 10 more minutes slowly. So 45 minutes panel discussion is, uh, is only required. So what we'll do is, before we go to the final round of things, uh, we will take uh, three minutes. Uh, we would like to get uh, the audience side because it should not be one one way traffic talking. If anybody is having any clarification, we will take three questions uh, because otherwise, uh, then remaining yes, we are all there during lunch time. You can this one. Three questions we will take. Yes, uh, please, gentlemen, uh, on the back side, please. Um, so, could could anyone highlight about the upcoming timeline, uh, estimated timeline for the SCE 200 up upgrade, and when can we expect the first, uh, uh, you know, operational launch? Okay, probably uh, I am the person I am supposed to answer. So, basically, what our friend has asked is, uh, we are developing a 200 ton thrust uh, liquid oxygen, liquid, uh, I mean, kerosene-based uh, uh, engine called uh, SC 200 ton, uh, SC 200 engine. Uh, this is for replacing the core liquid stage of Mark 3 vehicle for enhancing the Mark 3 payload. Right now, I will tell you the design, everything is completed. All subsystem cold flow tests are completed. And uh, IPRC Mahendra uh, near 1000 crore facilities uh, commissioned and uh, inaugurated by none other than our Honorable Prime Minister a uh, few months back. Now, we are in the process of going out with the hot test program. In fact, four hot tests on the powerhead ignition related aspect. Successfully, we have accomplished. Last year, one test we did, that we had a small setback, but then everything is land and we have put in place. Right now, our target is, uh, the ISRO target is to fly the semi cryo complete the engine development and stage development and go ahead with the flight program by 2027, uh, second quarter. That is the target. Okay, second question. Yes, please. Both of you, with that, we'll stop. Uh, oh, you first. Yeah. Uh, so my question is that what is the scale of NGLV-S with respect to the LVM-3 that we are having right now? Ah, uh, say LVM-3, uh, the height of the vehicle is something around 43 meter height. And this height is something around 93 meter in terms of height. In terms of diameter, LVM-3 is a 4 meter diameter class vehicle. This is a 5 meter diameter class vehicle. LVM-3, we had uh, two uh, S200 strap-on motors, solid strap-on. And there was a liquid uh, restorable core stage and a cryogenic upper stage. Here, uh, the core vehicle, uh, we are going to have a unified uh, propulsion system called uh, liquid oxygen methane. The first stage will have nine engines, second stage will have two engines. Of course, the propulsion loading is given there. Uh, 450 tons, first stage, second stage is 120. And uh, then the capability of the vehicle is, uh, as the core vehicle, it can lift 23 ton to low earth orbit. Mar 3 is maximum 9 ton to low earth orbit. And we are also going to attach two strap-on, solid strap-on, that is the current thinking, uh, with the S160. With that, 32 ton will be the capability. That means almost four times the capability of the vehicle. Yes, one more question. With that, we'll go to the panelist again. So as you can see, rocket industry is getting so much into liquid propulsion, especially into cryogenics. So uh, now, uh, in cryogenics, uh, we are mostly using uh, locks and LNG. So, sir, does LPAC has any plans in uh, making such kind of uh, propulsion systems that can reduce the mass of current propulsion systems and reduce the volume of propulsion? Uh, understood. You are asking about locks LNG system. Yes, sir. Am I right? Um, yes, sir. Does okay. Uh, yeah, please say uh, we are going, we have configured this vehicle with uh, locks methane system because. 
it has got its own advantage not lng methane uh, with high purity methane that is what we are uh, planning to do uh, in fact uh, we are developing a 110 ton thrust engine that engine will be used in nine engines in the core stage and two two engines in the upper stage that is what is the plan and of course future when we are talking about taking our own brothers to moon and bring them back and then the capability of the vehicle has to really go up and propulsion system has to further go up. Can you go to the next slide for you? Just to you have a look of this particular slide. Next slide, can you go? Uh, in fact, uh, during the COVID time, uh, the slide, can you switch over to the next slide? During the COVID time, what we have done is a 20 ton class liquid oxygen methane engine. A technology demonstrator was conceived, built, and I'm happy to announce to this audience uh, all the tests, seven tests were done, all were successful uh, through the modeling base and other things. During the COVID time, it was done in a very silent mode. With that confidence, now we are designing the uh, new engines. I think with that, we'll stop uh, with the audience side. Now we'll go back. Instead of myself starting, I think we'll go in the reverse way. Uh, I think I will give... Uh, sir, what time you have to close? Maybe five minutes. No problem. Then we will give each one minute. Uh, we will start with uh, Mr. Raghavendra, your uh, final 60 seconds you take and uh, your words. Uh, sir, if just I want to take us back to 2000 when the defense industry opened up for private participation. And from that time till today, 24 years down the line, we have seen multiple companies who have come who could offer complete solutions for the defense needs. Uh, and we also have seen in 2004 when U.S. opened up uh, the space industry for private participation. And the proof is in front of us. Now, how many companies are making multi-billion dollar uh, solutions for the world? So India has come out with the opening of the space sector only in 2020. And uh, 23, the space policy was, has come out. So uh, we need to take some learnings from these successful models which was deployed where the industry uh, could come up to not just, uh, I'm just changing the narrative. I'm not talking only about developing NGLV. Uh, this is an opportunity for the industry to learn a little bit more from ISRO on developing solutions for the space. So NGLV can be the stepping stone where multiple systems can be jointly developed between ISRO and the industry. There are capabilities where we will learn much more from the ISRO's knowledge base, which has built over so many years. So the way I look at it, NGLV is a stepping stone going further where uh, we can try to develop those skill sets which are today missing in the space industry, but in other industries that exist. We can leverage those trends and build the next generation launch vehicle and much more. So that, that's a small point which I wanted to bring out. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Ramesh, for your uh, final statements. So I think uh, we all will agree that, uh, you know, industrial cooperation and leveraging the industry's capabilities is the way forward. Um, as uh, Raghavendra said that, you know, we could uh, probably from the legacy of what we have been doing, we could probably expand a little more and, you know, uh, finally reach a stage probably after some time to give a complete solution that would be uh, the way forward. Um, as a, as Godrich, we look at it from a very positive perspective that, you know, we've been in this particular field, especially on the uh, liquid propulsion side, and we would like to do more of what we are doing. And uh, uh, I, I would say this would be a success because uh, the experience is there that can be leveraged for the success. That's also. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sanjay Singh. See, my closing point will be that in the field of energetics, see, this is the most slow-moving rather uh, area, I would say, uh, in the terms of research. And uh, see, if we look forward to a lot of industry coming into this and also the lot of startups and young minds to work in the real original research to how do we increase that. The gentleman there was asking how do you increase energy density, if I understood him correctly. So a lot of opportunities for the young minds to get into this area and explore the possibility of increasing the energy density because as we go more and more space, you require uh, same fuel to work much larger, harder for you to take you further and bring you back. So a lot of opportunities are here for that and industry is very young. Indian engineers, engineer scientists, they are requirement to work in this area originally and work for the higher energy densities and all that possibility. So with that, I look forward to, uh, as a contributor from the solar, we look forward to work in this area in the original research. And also we intend to engage 
lot of youngsters to in this area uh, so that they can work for original research in increasing the energetic side of the whole thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank the organizers for giving us this great opportunity to share. I think uh, this type of panel discussion, we can share only this much uh, within one hour and uh, not great things are possible, but then hope the audience would have got some flavor out of it. First of all, Mr. Raghavendra, uh, even though he talked for only three minutes, uh, you please understand a country where we moved the rockets in bicycles, uh, not new bicycles, old bicycles. From that era, rockets are going to take human beings to the space. So that is the type of growth uh, we have got. And now, uh, 1980, when our first rocket placed the satellite only 35 kg to low Earth orbit, from that, today we are talking about 32,000 kg to low Earth orbit. And in 19, uh, I mean, 2040, we are talking about uh, 80 to 100 ton capability uh, lift off uh, to low Earth orbit. You please see the phenomenal growth in the space uh, transportation uh, sector. Now, uh, towards this, uh, my friends, uh, LND side, uh, you know, the, I am also, I also joined in the solid propulsion area. Initially, six years I was purely working in the solid propulsion area, uh, including even again, a lot, lot of things uh, I could uh, work like a squirrel, uh, contributing in the junior level. So I can understand the type of contribution made by both solar group as well as uh, LND. LND everywhere they are, they are there uh, in the beginning onwards. So their contributions are so significant and phenomenal. And uh, solid motor cases without uh, LND, where is the solid motor cases? So they are the people. And uh, then energetics, uh, yes, uh, I remember Excel motors recently. We tested your motor. It was a very satisfying performance. Now coming to the LND again, they have contributed in infrastructure build-up, a lot of things. And Godrej, their contribution, without them, there is no liquid engine, to be frank, in a nutshell. And uh, he nicely summarized 175 Vigas engine. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I joined with uh, MTEC Regenic Engineering in, from IIT Karapur and uh, really uh, when the Russians, uh, the technology was denied to us, it was a great insult. I was a young boy. Today, I am happy to announce to this audience that India is having two indigenously developed cryogenic stages and we are one among six countries <laughs> having that capability. A country which was denied the technology Today, we are proud that we are having the technology. Not only that, in the C-25 uh, cryogenic propulsion, uh, which is powering the Mar-3 upper stage, we have got two world records. One is from the subsystem development completion to the flight. Uh, uh, any other country, if you take a minimum time taken is 42 months by Americans. Other countries have taken more time. And India, we said 24 months at the target. And we have accomplished that in 28 months. And we are having a world record. And another thing is a stage test. Uh, any country generally takes uh, the hydrogen oxygen stage test 10 months time. We have completed, uh, I think even very difficult to imagine, 34 days we have completed successfully the test, stage test and we are having a world record. And towards all these things, I think our friend who is on the right side, he was involved in the engine game. Now, uh, coming in nutshell, it is our responsibility to contribute because at, uh, when the space program was started almost 60 years back, it was looking like a luxury type of thing. But today, the space uh, has become inherent part of each and every citizen. And we used to say, to understand the application of set satellite, I mean space system, switch off all satellites between 5 to 8 in the evening, then you will understand. No transaction, ATM transactions, no TV, this one, no communication, then a lot of things and disaster system, everything, I think will come to a standstill. So that is the place we stand and lot of satellite requirements are there, lot of things has to come and lot of growth has to take place. Surely, uh, as I told in my initial remarks, a country which started with a uh, very humble beginning, today we have reached to a very greater stature. This stature is not only by ISRO scientists, so the credit goes to academia and our industrial partners. So that's why I'm very happy to share the stage with all our uh, partners. And now coming to the NGLB, one point I will clarify with that I will close my uh, summary. As it was told, uh, you know, the earlier phases when rocket was designed, designers will design and then the manufacturing scientist will come to take for manufacturing. And then third, the, it will, the industrial partner, they will produce. But today that is not the system. And the design phase itself, we are going to involve the industrial partners because 
the manufacturing should be part of the design process for example you are going to use additive manufacturing in a big way for the engine and other systems so thereby it is not that designer somebody is designing somebody is manufacturing we are going to be together and but then lot of support has to come from industries with that dear friends let me thank each and every one of you and i'm um, happy to Uh, say that we are going to be a developed country before we celebrate 100 years of independence and indian space program through all your support is going to be one of the vibrant and uh, unique and useful program and we will be in par with any other space faring nation in this game by 2040 with that once again let me thank the audience and the organizers and let us close the panel discussion thank you jai hind I request Mr. B. M. Raghavendra, Senior Deputy, G. M. Aerospace, to please come forward. I request. Uh, I request Mr. Sanjay Singh, Executive Director, Solar Industries India Limited, to please come forward. for the felicitation award yes sir this is good experience good sir now i would like to invite mr prem krishnan to please join us to receive the felicitation award yes good And now I would like to invite Mr. Rajit Ali, Senior Advisor, SIA India, to felicitate Mr. Dr. V. Narayanan, Director, LPSC ISRO. I request you all to please come forward to take a group photograph. Thank you.